So timing, um, maybe you guys have heard me use the phrase a few times, like a, a concert of bouncing balls, right? If you take it down to its single most simple exercise, aside from the flower sack, you know, it's the bouncing ball, right? Well, all we're doing with character animation is juggling like a thousand bouncing balls at once, um, you know, and making sure that the timing of those work beautifully, just like a symphony, you know, are landing at the right time in relation to other times, are not all hitting on the exact same moment. You know, the orchestra doesn't usually, you know, unless they're doing it for a reason, hit all on the same note, all at the same time. Um, so it's your job to juggle all of those uh, at once and make the timing interesting for us to watch. Every single frame is significant. So um, like I said, I think in the polish lecture, I showed you an example of a bouncing ball that was, you know, we looked at the Y translate of it and it had a bit of a bend on the bottom because it was the default tangent that Maya gave you. If you just set keys on, you know, up and down of the bouncing ball, it's gonna give you this soft curve that it doesn't have the right timing. So shaving one frame off of the frame before that ball impacts the ground makes all the difference in terms of selling the squishiness of the ball, the weight of the ball, the speed of the ball. Um, it, that is how you communicate, whether it's a, a bowling ball or a tennis ball, right? Is the timing of some of those things, or if it's a balloon, you know, then it can come down softly. And how does that affect things? All the time at DreamWorks, when we're reviewing people's work, it's like shave a frame off there, take one frame off of this action, add two frames there, or steal three frames from this action and put them over here. That's a note that happens all the time. Every single frame is significant. So if your animation looks watery or too flowy or too computer graphics -y, all the terms, swimming is another one I've heard, you know, then your timing is lousy and you gotta find a way to dig in there and get some texture and richness out of the timing. Um, it really helps clarity and readability. You know, oftentimes people will drift through their holds, their golden poses. So if I hit a pose and I'm looking at something, sometimes it's nice to just not be afraid to purely hold the character, you know, get him in to that pose in a nice way, overshoot, settle, and then hold. Let us read the expression, let us read whatever it is you want to tell us, and then get out and go to on to the next thing. Oftentimes junior animators will drift right through that and things will, you know, there'll be too many keys and too much stuff happening in there and you don't land the moment. Um, so clarity and readability in terms of your timing is really important. Let those moments land where they need to land, you know, and it can be, like I said, just another frame that you add to a single action and you'll be so surprised at the dramatic difference that that makes. Um, Timing can reflect emotion and make or break comedy. You know, if you're floating through your keys, I don't know what it is about it, but if you're doing something really simple and comedic, um, like penguins right now, you know, that's the style of the movie that we're making, zipping in and out of these held poses. If you don't nail that timing, it'll kill the comedy. If I'm like drifting through it or if I have too much physical motion, it's not funny it's so much easier to be funny when you just hit the pose on to the next pose you're really letting things land and for some reason that's so much more funny because the idea has clarity I think really um, if you are moving the character a lot all the time the audience you're asking them to process all of that movement and they don't have time to think about just the comedy 